Okay, so I, I would like to start. I would welcome these three people. This, uh, this talk is uh, led by Tasia, you know Enrico, and you know, perhaps might know Alan from uh, Edinburgh. They are all talking about an application recommender. Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. Um, well, this buff was, the, the main goal of this buff is, is putting this topic on the agenda, and as these people would be here, this would be a great opportunity to share uh, experiences. And, well, I'm finishing, kind of finishing my master's in this topic. Uh, information retrieval, recommendation, and I'm a follower of Vehicle's work. <laughs> so, many things that you are going to see here are use case of that, that stuff that he, that infrastructure that he showed. And so, well, we, we both, we, the three of us uh, have experience in, have some, uh, some moment in time, have worked and tried to build a recommender for Debian. And I'd like them to speak a little bit of their experience and uh, they are both both services that are not online anymore, and mine is almost there. <laughs> and well, they speak a little bit. Then I speak a little bit about mine, and then we share and we open the discussion. Maybe you can give us some advices and ideas to contribute to the work. So, uh, Enrico, most first. what? Most naive first. Okay. <laughs> uh, this this both we made a we prepared an agenda. It's on Gobi also. Uh, I don't think at least if you want to, if you can take notes, it will be better than me and they. I think and well, but it will be there as a, to guide us. So he go. Okay. Hi. Um, yeah. About um, package recommenders like. Um, what are the packages that I should see, but I don't know? Um, it's, an, it's an interesting and difficult problem. And uh, I did try a very naive approach, which is to index all the emails sent by Popcorn, uh, which is basically a list of packages people have in their systems, and index them as if they are documents and if each package is a word. So basically, each system is a document and each package is a word, and then use um, text search system that I like a lot, and I reckon you guessed it's Sapien, um, to um, given my package list, look for similar documents. And that's it. That's the naive approach I had. Uh, I send a list of packages in my system, and the database will give me similar systems. And uh, then I take the packages in those systems that I don't have, and those are recommendations. Um, it was a prototype, it was a naive approach, it kind of worked for s several cases, but it's never been, uh, it's never been studied enough. Um, other people did something a bit more uh, solid, uh, so I'll pass the mic, I guess, to. Well, hello? Yeah. Um, I did a talk in Edinburgh, as uh, I was introduced just before, about my approach. So that video should actually be still online. If you're really into that approach, you could uh, listen to that. Um, what I did is basically the Amazon approach. Uh, so somebody who buys A also buys B. There's the famous example of somebody who buys diapers also buys beer, which is not the most intuitive uh, connection, but it actually is like that. Um, this approach had the bad side that it takes a huge amount of computing time. And I spent most of my time with uh, actually building a new algorithm that allowed to, well, answer this question in, well, let's say, sort of real time. Um, yeah, I, I put this, uh, prototype up 
uh, at Edinburgh and um, got great feedback at the actual uh, conference and afterwards I never heard loads. Uh, I didn't have really feedback and then luckily or unluckily I got hired and didn't have any time anymore. So um, yeah, so I'm very proud or I uh, think it's very good that Tessia now does the proper follow-up work or actually doing it from another per perspective, doing it yeah, properly, I guess. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. Okay, so what I, I'm uh, doing is I, I tried to use the, the same approach that Alan did, the association things, that you build association rules that who has A, B, and C also has D with a certain uh, probability or support, what they call support. But it's really heavy and uh, I didn't have computer power for that. Then I, I, I started to work on Enrico, Enrico's approach, uh, which is really based on search. So all my strategies are based on search, but I do it in different ways. I well, basically, I can, I can separate my strategies in content-based strategies and collaborative-based strat strategies. That the content-based only looks what the user have, what the system have installed, and uh, recommends packages based on that set of packages. And the collaborative needs really this repository of users, history of users. So we use Popcorn. For that, I build an index of popcorn, and well, then I, I do the search in many different ways. And now, what, what I'm working right now is in a, a survey uh, to collect uh, people's uh, evaluations about the different strategies. I've done well. I'm still doing some experience experiments uh, to really calibrate the algorithms. And because there are all, there are many parameters: the size of, size of the profile, the size of your neighborhood, the size of many things. And how do you? We are going to look at it in the challenge. How do you build, really, really build this profile of users and and so on? So, I'm finishing this this step of these experiments for me to choose the best parameters and then ask people what what if. The tests that I that I did are good or not, and which should be the strategy that should be adopted for a service. And I can show you afterwards the survey and the the interface for the recommender. But I'd like to uh, before showing that I'd like to talk about these challenges that we face when we are developing this kind of system. And maybe you can help us. And as I, I didn't have much, that much opportunity to talk with them, this is a great uh, opportunity, I think. So challenges, well, there are many. Some first first thing that, that came in my mind is, well, it it can't be something that the user will go there and and look for the recommendation. It should be, in a certain way, integrated with, the application, with some application installers. So it should be built in a way that it could be attached to, to an application installer. And I was really excited about the upstream thing, and I was following all that, and I was, <laughs> I'm also like waiting, and there's no more um, movements and about that in the list. But, uh, well, Enrico has talked a little bit about how it was, and I don't know how we're going to do this, if any, well, where is the microphone? Here? So, um, yes, maybe, uh, yeah, I'll, so I'll show it right now, and then <laughs> we Well, as I said, I'm, I was uh, working in this this interface, and then I, I stopped it to build my survey because, well, the survey should be ready f first, I think. And 
So this is the, let, I'll just show an example of how this should, it's really, this interface is really similar to the screenshots, so it's based on screenshots. Uh, yes, yeah, the demo thing. Uh, shit. Uh. Okay, I'll show it afterwards. And <laughs> when they start to talk, I can figure out what's happening. Well, the the survey. This should be working. I'd like to to release it during DevConf. And well, then the thing. Sorry. Oh, uh, yes. Well, as Enrico said, it's really easy to get all this info about packages. So I basically uh, do compute my recommendation and. Uh, I bring back the set of uh, packages that I'm going to recommend, and I look for their info in UDD, and so and in screenshots I build this, and here the user will say, uh, "This is useful or not? This is a poor recommendation, or this this was pleasantly surprised." And. Uh, uh, let me just, okay. And after then, <laughs> but this is the survey, as I said, I need this just to validate and to test different strategies. This won't be the user interface for the, as I'm not uh, an interface builder, I'm, this wasn't really the, the focus. But okay, and, and after these these ten evaluations were complete one one response, and the user can do many as many as as he wants, and continue this as much as as I get. It's better. And when he finishes, he can choose if he wants to give more details who he who who he is, and if he wants to be. Uh, his name published in the thanks page, I don't know. And that's it. This is the survey. And this, okay. You show the input file? Yes. Well, the input file is the, is a popcorn submission file. The format is a popcorn submission file or any file with the, with the, the package names as the first fields of each line. So. I have some uh, some examples that I use in my. This is with I got with DPKG query. So well, the first package is the first field of each line is my, is one package, and it also works with back with just. With a list of packages or a popcorn submission file. So, this is what I have done right now, and uh, I plan to release this survey before we leave DebConf so that you can help me to collect data. And the, the, pro the interface for the recommender is coming. Valesio is helping me, uh, is part of our team, Valesio, Thiago, and me. And we are open to contributions. The, the code is on GitHub, github.com slash tasa slash app recommender. The survey is at deb.lib. L E dot uh, slash app rec.
as I said, it's not ready yet, but you'll be not you'll be notified when it's when I need your help. Did anyone put the, the, the link to the code in the notes? Ah, no. So I think well, after my test, then uh, I, I, the, the, the basis of tests that I can do without people telling me if it's good or not, I use a technique called cross-validation. So I have a set of packages uh, installed in one system. I can get any Poppycon submission file. I partition this, this set of packages, take one partition out, uh, give this um, what is left to the recommender to, to build the profile and compose the recommendation and then I see of this partition that is out I can see I can check what was recommended or not and then I can check uh, I can use lots of metrics like precision recall f1 well many metrics and so this I, I can know which one is, is working better than others, but it's not really a real validation. I, I, I think I really need people, I really need real users validating what they are, they are getting as recommendations. Um, do you want to talk about anything about validation or of results? Anything? Okay. Yeah, uh, quick question. Uh, you talked about the app stream thing um, earlier, and I know that they've agreed to um, use some shared interfaces and some shared so uh, source code also from Software Center. Yes. Um, but is anybody of the distributions that's o that already has something like that um, publishing their algorithms, how they do the recommendations, or is that always secret sauce for everybody? Well, they do, well, the software center, they do collect, they, they have a ratings and review servers, but I don't have access to that. And they, they don't have uh, yet the, the recommending uh, algorithms ready. What they do, they do that, maybe you can talk more. I was wanted to say that I'm not aware that anybody is yet doing recommendations at all. Yeah. Well, they do sort. No, they they sort and they say, ah, oh, these are suggested packages, but they don't they don't have they don't do this kind of recommendation uh, using a database and. They have rating, but I don't think they recommend based on what packages you have installed in your system. But even they are not using the rating yet, as a, as I. Okay. Well, I, I followed the I followed the week of a recommender, and as I see, it's not ready yet. This part, as they, they, using this rating and review server, is not ready yet. I think. DKG. No. Um, I did not really understand how you get the set of packages which are you uh, evaluating in your survey. Is uh, how got did you got these ten packages? These imaging. Ah, uh, this is the, the result of the recommendation. Well, the the user up uploads a file, and I will get this this file as my input. I will infer a profile. This is the the I think is the mo the biggest challenge is infer inferring this profile based on a set of files, deciding which ones will be used to do the queries and. And Wouldn't it make sense to use Xapian to, to have some similar... Uh, but it's all Xapian. <laughs> it, it's, I use Xapian. Well, there are huge amounts of approaches to this. And in this case, it's Xapian. In my case, it was the a priori algorithm. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of how you approach the problem. Yes, yeah, so well, there's many th many strategies and approaches to to build recommendations. You can build, as he said, he builds uh, association rules. Uh, but then it's it's really heavy. It's, I, as I told you, I, I couldn't do that. I tried with a priori and other uh, trees algorithms. But with search, is is easy. It's really fast and it's doable. And I I also build 
build index for popcorn and for I use apt zapping index, but I use I also partition the index. I don't use the whole index because well, but it's it's all zapping behind. Um, what is exciting is that this these works will bring knowledge into Debian. It's like I met him in Edinburgh and he was doing these a priori lists and he pointed me at an a priori implementation and I was like, and he told me what a priori is and uh, which is this thing like people who have this and this also tend to have this with this probability. And I was like, hey, that's interesting. And I used it on the Deptex tagging website to automatically calculate tips. So if a package has tag A and B, I will say, well, 90% of the time, chances are you'd like to have C as well. And that worked really well because the set of information is much smaller for tags than it is for uh, packages co-installed in systems. And, and so uh, it, it's exciting to see new, new technology being brought into Debian. Um, do you still have your algorithm? Yes. Okay, let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Andres, if you want more, more details I don't know, about the implementation, as Enrico said, uh, the Zapier, the Aptil Zapier index is built on, uh, well, it's a, it, it index each package as a document and each uh, uh, term as descriptions and, well, there are many uh, sources for the Aptil Zapier index. It index as terms, all related to one package. I can use this to do the search and I can also index the popcorn but then each document is a user, is a submission, and I, the terms are the packages or their tags. I, I can build, um, I used to build the, the, the popcorn index, index also pa tags of packages, and then you do the search in this, this index. And then you can combine search coming from here and there, and then you then you have the different strategies and well um, maybe we should go like in a high level mode, uh, so this usually works. you have a set of data, you feed it into this algorithm, it is trained, so it builds a model. And then you come to the model with either a context or not a context. Context could be the uh, popcorn file or three applications you mostly use, which are your, uh, which is your use case or uh, something you want to search for, like Excel we saw before. And then this engine, the the uh, model starts kick off calculates something is a major, major large black box and spits out some recommendations. This is like in a simple way. So um, that you already have seen with uh, the demo that Tessia did because the 10 recommendations were based on a model. Uh, I, I don't know actually what model, uh, uh, <laughs> what, what is in the model. Yes, I, I use also different, uh, you mean, for the, the profile of the, the user, but it not, not goes the profile into of the user, but um, the engine that calculated it, uh, or the, the model that calculated it. Yeah, it's different from your your approach that you really you have a training phase and you you have this model of classification or anything. For me, it's it's search, it's search. So I build the index. This would be my model, like the index, and then you query the index with with a, with a query, a search query which is the, the user profile or, I don't know, the neighborhood. It, it depends on which strategy you are using. And so my model will be the, the, the index. Okay, um, one major problem I had was uh, what, what do I take to teach my model or what, to get a good model? So I'm if there are no questions, uh, then I'm just talking a bit about it, I guess. <laughs> um, you can also see it at the uh, uh, Guppy Gobi file. Um, if you train your model with uh, data that is not related, it of course will turn out with really strange recommendations. So um, 
For example, I turned off the lips. I, uh, well, actually, you did that. Um, you limited everything to the programs, the desktop programs, I guess? Actually, I was only use programs as whole programs, the tag whole programs, but after talking to Ehiko, I started to also doing this uh, profiling based on own desktop application. So only package that has desktop files. But uh, in my case, I, I have this many uh, possibilities of profiling, and I can pick any one of them. Um, what, what I also did, and I think you're doing it also, is just taking the recently used packages as a reference. So I usually use uh, MUT and also Evolution, and uh, that is actually used as a reference then for several things. Um, but I don't use sulfide, which is maybe also installed. Actually, I use that too, but anyways. Um, anything that you really use, because anything that is installed on the computer can mean anything. Um, but using what is recently used, in my case, that was four, four years ago, um, the model turned out so sparse that uh, the actual programs I could like rate or give recommendations for were quite a few. So um, for me, it was, well, I could use it for a second input, like do a normal recommendation for anything, and then use that on top to weight these programs to, like, uh, these are more important. Um, yep. I, I'd like to, uh I have the idea that maybe there are some apps that not a lot of people use, and then they won't be in, in the survey or anything, okay, and then we might not think about them, okay, and we might miss them. Did you think about that problem? Well, um, well, there's two things. <laughs> One thing is that we can't really, there are really few use the low popcorn and really few use uh, applications, they can't go into the collaborative recommendation because of privacy issues of this data that I'm using, Popcorn. So packages which are really, I, I'm just discarding, but actually they would be discarded for the algorithm, but I'm just being, to, just to prevent problems. Because <laughs> this was really uh, a, uh, an issue for me to use the, the Popcorn data. But then, uh, well, this, this uh, terms that appear in the in the index very few in very little cases they will have a, a, a um, they will have a higher weight w when you do the search this is based, this is part of the the search uh, strategy it depends on the the weighting scheme that you are using but usually if let's say well if the the, the the package is really common, and it, I have it in my profile. Having this package in, in another user having this package doesn't uh, link this user to me. But if I have one package that is really uncommon, and the another user has the same package that is uncommon, it makes a link. So, um, so that's the reason why recommendation engines usually use several models for generating uh, a, something like based on uh, actual installation behavior, if I call it like that, and also um, if there is nothing like that, or um, that's actually a point on the list, um, if we just recommend the same things all the time, then new programs won't ever re be recognized. So the thing is to get another component in to actually like at least put it somewhere in the top 10 or something so that people see it and then uh, also try those programs, uh, not just listing just the... Yeah, this is usually treated as the new item problem for recommendation. When you have a, a, an item that is not new for, for the population, it will never be recommended because it will be... <coughs> I just wanted not to stop this discussion because I uh, have a different topic. I'm quite interested in, in this thing because uh, in the blends we create meta packages and I really want to know uh, what else have the people installed. But um, 
uh, that's why I'm specifically uh, um, interested to perhaps get a better design of the meta packages. But I'm wondering if we create these meta packages, this has just installs a common set of packages on the machine. Would this disturb your research somehow because we just um, force the user to have some packages installed? Would it uh, make I'm some... Not, uh, um, well, that depends on your view. Because, um, I don't know, uh, in, in Debian Science way, it installs, let's say, Skycomp, I don't know, and R. So um, a user who doesn't use the task and installs R is then also recommended because of this, more likely to uh, Skycomp. Um, it's, of course, uh, well, you have to ask if that's, that's a good or a bad thing. Um, just wanted to say my naive approach would certainly always suggest you like uh, KDE games or GNOME games if you didn't have it and you had games installed uh, but it, a system can when it's built properly and not just a prototype would actually wait according to that because well uh, if you compute association rules so people that have A and B also have C we are basically auto detecting Debian dependencies because you know that's what they are, and you need to throw those away uh, because they're obvious. And then you see what remains, and those are actual choices made by people. This is this is something related to well, one of the the approach that I use for profiling the 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 user is well, if if it if I'm running the system in my local machine, I can know, uh, I know which packages were auto-installed and which were not, so I can, I can remove all auto-installed packages. If, I'm, if I don't have this information, if I am run it in, in a server and I receive this popcorn submission as input, I can also do, what I do is I, I remove all the all packages that are dependencies of other packages that are installed. It's not really the same thing is not accurate that much, but it's something. Because then I can, well, I, if I, my input has 2,000 packages, it usually goes to 400, 500. It's really, it, it, uh, the results are really better when I do this. And so, and well, libs also are usually, it depends also uh, who the, who is the target, uh, target, user. So if, if we want to build a recommended, recommended system for specific for blends, for science, we could calibrate it better than if it's a general thing. Actually, just a short comment um, with the a priori, it's, I figured out everything that has a 100% installation, uh, uh, well, um, possibility, it's crap because it's a dependency. Because everybody who has, uh, let's say, um, Xapian has this library. So that was quite easy to figure out uh, that uh, if you take those away, um, at least with a priori, you don't have a problem. With other statistical approaches, you still might have that. Okay, there was. Uh, so it's uh, just to say that I logged in your server. That is also Can my server. <laughs> And uh, I update the Git tree and try to uh, recommend that it's working. I don't know why your what local copy is not. Yeah. No, it's just Murphy. Yeah, you, you, you can try your tasa.org if you want. It's working there. Oh, uh, tasa.org? 8.8. Eight, eight, zero, eight, zero. So this could be an interface. Here, I give the, rec the details of the recommendation, how it was, how the strategy was calibrated, as I said, and which weighting scheme I'm using for Sapien. Uh, 
Well, the list of packers, if it's, if it's more than five, I will not show them all, of course. Strategy, uh, that's it. And for, for a user interface, I, I should probably not show like these details. I, I was first, we thought about showing the user the, the whole uh, possibilities. To, so you, can, you could choose the waiting scheme, the strategy, and if you want to cluster the input, or you can do hybrid, hybrid strategies. You can use two strategies in, in parallel and show the results together. You can use the results of one as input to the other. There are many ways of doing that also. But then I think for, for the end user, it doesn't care. I should really find which one I, I think is better, and then this should be height. So that's it. Thank you, Tiago. Yes. Uh, yes, when, if I click here, I have all the details for the packages. I have even dev tags here and and the image can also be well th this interface is is also a prototype but it's what we have for now and well the code is available uh, and I I really appreciate uh, collaboration so anyone who can who wants to, who is interested in getting into the code and helping me with the interface and any other stuff, uh, programming the strategies, I'll appreciate. Okay, um, any other questions? Yes. So I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the previous session, so maybe this was covered uh, in the previous session, but uh, I'm curious, I don't understand exactly when you say we're just using search, what that means. Um, I'm not used to search resulting in a string of words that you might be searching for, uh, but rather in finding the thing that looks like the thing that you've put in. So can you, can you maybe clarify more what the, what the input is when you're building the model as search? Okay. And then my, I, my second question um, is, do we have data, you were saying that collecting data about the user, about their most recently used applications, is a more interesting way to get a cluster of, of terms that you're then gonna look for a recommendation from, right? Because you might have a system that's used by five users and the packages that are installed represent a sort of union of all of the packages that they use. Um, and I'm wondering whether your systems were trained with per user data or per system data. Um, because it seems like if you train the systems with per user data, you can get more interesting info. Yes. But I also don't know if we have any sort of per user surveillance turned on in Debian no. that we could actually take advantage of. Not that I think we should have surveillance turned on. Actually, what I, what I say is a user is a system. I, 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 the user, because when we, when we talk about recommendation system, we have users, users and items. So the user here is the system, and uh, the items are packages or applications if you use only applications as the repository only the repository of applications. And well, when I said uh, you want the, the, the workflow, oh, I have something here to show. <laughs> I have a, a picture. Um, no, it's not, uh, maybe down there. That shows the, the data flow, but Basically, what, what I do is I, I use the, the packages installed as the profile, as the, the, oh shit, here. So the user, which is a system, uh, gives me a profile, a set, a set of packages. I will, I will treat it in different, I can treat it in different ways to really find which is the profile. As I said, I can uh, discard a lot of packages, depends on the strategy I use. Then I give it to, to the recommender. Uh, we have 
many different strategies. As I said, content-based, collaborative use also. Content-based is only up, uh, uses as a uh, source uh, only up Zapier index. The collaborative also use popcorn that can be uh, the submissions can be closed before going to popcorn or not. It can be the, the raw submissions. Uh, clustering is grouping things together. Okay. Um, then there's demographic profiles uh, that are actually I'm not using for the survey because uh, I'm not getting this information, but th that would be good for blends, for example. Uh, when we say demographic pro profiles that uh, the user tells you their interested fields and, um, and it, I don't know, his uh, profession and then you can, if, you can also filter the results. And item reputation is when the, the uh, like I could use um, bug, how many bugs the package has, how many RC bugs the package has. I could use this kind of info that I could get at UDD. And, and also refine the results, and I'm not using it yet, <laughs> but it's, it's a possibility. And then I, I output the recommendation. But uh, for the, talking about the search, how it works, I get this set of packages, I uh, clean it, so it's a lot less, because as many data as you have, probably the, the result will be more garbage, so you should really filter it to what is really important. Then I, for example, the content base, I uh, map this profile into tags or, or uh, descriptions, terms, uh, words, because the, the content base, you recommend, the recommendation is based on the content, so you need to, to know what, what is the content. You can represent this item, this package, uh, using his tags, its tags, or using its description, you can do both. You can, and I, I do also. I, you can do the different strategies, and I search in Ask Zapier Index this, this, for these terms. There are the, the most relevant terms for this user, and then I, I get. Uh, the packages from the from the because then the packages are the documents in that in that index. So I get which documents I are re relevant for me. This is for the content base. So um, what I have used and I think you're using is uh, a popcorn data, so per machine data of the usage. Uh, another source I used was Deptex, and uh, I think you use it too. Uh, other uh, well, Sapien output is basically that. Um, we have a list uh, in the copy of other sources we, well, might want to use, but we don't have, or there might be, for example, a social graph, like uh, the demographics, what is your uh, well, task that you want to do, or what your typical task at the day, um, your... Uh, Whatever you gave me, <laughs> actually some some good examples. Um, so what we wrote down, for example, is is a, a social graph. That's basically that. Mm -hmm. um, you could base it on something like GNU PG. I was calling Jonas. Jonas. Maybe Jonas. We're talking about social data. Maybe you want to. We don't have that much time, but uh, we were talking yesterday about using this kind of stuff. For example, for example, for Freedom Box, where you can, where we could ba uh, build a social network of people, and their packages could be packages or applications could be exchanged. So instead of publishing your data to a central service as a popcorn, you could share with your friends, and then you you could get this recommendation based on what your friends have. Maybe it's more useful than the whole world because maybe probably your friends or your, I don't know, people that are similar, have similar tastes that, but you say who they are and you allow and you show, you share your info only with these people, it would be more like the privacy and all the issues that Freedom Box wants to, 
to address, that would be uh, something. But maybe, uh, Jonas? What we, for example, have is the architecture of, of a system, like the, it's PowerPC, it's ARM, it's uh, i386, so on ARM I don't get the recommendation to install Grub because it's quite well used and um, it doesn't fit to my architecture, so anyways. Um, another good information would be, for example, uh, the size of the hard disk drive, so lightweight use uh, or heavyweight or whatever. So um, that's just a comment and... You, you, you covered it, you covered it pretty, pretty well, <laughs> so uh, I have no more. No, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can I have one very, very quick question that kind of I got excited about seeing that graph, it's one question. So you have a, a um, kind of box co called content base that can take the, the list of packages installed by the user and the normal app Xapian index and get the recommendation out? Yes. That's a command line tool that can run in anybody's system today. I want it. Yes, I was just uh, here at the <laughs> Okay, um, I think we should finish because the time is up. One last problem we have is, of course, privacy. For example, my system, you can identify single users in several cases. Um, with easy filtering, you can't undo it, so it's not distributable, actually. And I can't like give a SOAP interface to anybody uh, just querying it. And uh, so... Maybe next steps would be defining some, some API. Uh, you seem to have a quite good system, so there could be other recommendations built in there. Um, so that well, what I think is, is uh, as Enrico said, you, you can do it with one command line. It's not, well, the core is not, um, is not as I said, it's, it's not heavy. It's doable in a simple machine, and okay. But the thing is, we, what I think it, it's the, the biggest challenge for me, for example, is to, to decide what to, to, to decide what is important, what is not uh, of, from the profile, and if we are going to combine strategies, how are we going to do this? Uh, because the simple ones, the pure strategies, uh, we probably can do with a command line, but then probably um, we can have better results than, than just search in the, in the Zapier index, a simple search. Okay, this is basically the point, testing in the Gobi file. So look at it or ask us. Um, and actually, uh, well, if we have a running system, we need people testing it and telling something back. And I would actually suggest putting up some great uh, new mailing list where we can communicate about it. And, well, I think we should stop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for being here. And I hope I can send you the... I can release the, the surveys in DebConf so that you can give feedbacks. That's it.